the Atlanta Falcons, who stole our beloved quarterback, stole Kirk from us. They uh, signed a four-year, $180 million deal with Atlanta. And they, they made a, a number of other moves. Darnell Mooney, Rondell Moore um, come to mind here, getting that receiving group a little bit more advanced, some adding in nicely to the big bodies like Drake, like Drake London and Kyle Pitts, some speedsters. Ultimately, it all comes down to Kirk. So when you look at this contract for Atlanta, Ziggy, did they overspend on an aging quarterback coming off an Achilles? Or is this a, hey, this team can win right now. Great move. I'm really surprised that I was surprised that Kirk left Minnesota, but I was really surprised the team was this aggressive going after him because on the surface, it doesn't look very good. He's 36. He's coming off an Achilles injury. Any Falcons fans listening have had the experience of signing a big deal to an aging quarterback who's not very mobile, who's not very athletic and seeing how that goes. But the question you sort of have to ask yourself is, what better quarterback is walking through the door? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a lot of players on rookie deals who are exciting on offense. You have a defense that was better than a lot of people in the national media realized last year. And you get the rare opportunity to sign a guy who's not an MVP quarterback, right? He's probably overpaid a little bit, but a guy who is competitive, who puts you in a in the driver's seat to win the division. And while the Achilles injury is unfortunate, by all accounts, Kirk's recovering pretty well. It's certainly not what it used to be for athletes. And you sign some nice complimentary pieces around him. So while I think there's a risk for this deal to go bad in like 2026 or 2027, the Falcons want to make the playoffs, right? They want to win the division. They want to do something after this horrific Desmond Ritter experience and all those years of like Matt Ryan not quite being himself ever since the Super Bowl. So I, I don't mind the deal. I think that Kirk Cousins is the, about the best quarterback you could possibly hope to get in any realistic free agent or trade scenario. And ultimately, it's not really costing them a whole lot to have him around because, as I said, I don't think there's a realistic upgrade they could pursue. You know, it's, it's a difficult situation to break down because on one side of it, you have teams like the Falcons who are, are tired of mediocrity, like you said, not even mediocrity. They're tired well, of being I'm, bad. They're tired of being they're, yeah. They're tired of being bad. On the other side of it, the Vikings. The, when you compare the rosters, a lot of people have been making those comparisons lately. You know, talented skill positions, defenses that are okay, but uh, you know if they take a step better with Kirk, could elevate this team to a high level of contention. It's just which side of it do you fall down on? Do you want the quarterback who might be able to get you there? Probably not. But you'll be in playoff contending status every year, or do you want to be on the side where the Vikings are, where it's hey. You know, blow it up. And I think it was just the years of being in the same position year over year for Atlanta and Minnesota. They were just ready to flip it to the other side of that. Atlanta's tried getting a younger quarterback. They, they, it didn't work. Go after Kirk. Vikings had Kirk all his time. You know, had some success, but really didn't work. Go get your guy now. Uh, so I, I do think that you could pick which side of that coin you want to come down on. But for Atlanta, up and down that division, we've talked about this before. You're going against Baker Mayfield and the Bucks, Bryce Young and the Panthers, and you know the Saints and whatever, or Derek Carr and the Saints. You have the best team now, and all you have to do is get in. It's March Madness right now, right? You're, you're watching these games. All you have to do yeah. is get in, and you have a shot. I think for Atlanta, I'm going to call him a winner. I do think they overpaid a little bit, but Kirk Cousins has value, and all you have to do is look at the Las Vegas lines and see 10.5 wins for the Falcons is the over-under. And if the Falcons are getting 11 or 12 wins, which is not out of the question with the schedule they have, the division they're in, all of that, as much as I hate, you know, saying that teams should make moves based on who's around them, you do have to think if you're like the two seed or the three seed hosting one of those bottom feeder NFC teams. I mean, we saw it this year. I know the Packers went on a little bit of a run, but they're not going to be the sixth seed next year. Like there are a lot of opportunities for you to like win a game. Falcons winning a home playoff game. Like, can you imagine how excited the fans would be? And that's well within the possibilities. Yeah, that, that's all it is, is. Is you have to get in. And, and what I was saying before is you know, Vegas tells you things. They it, it might not make a ton of sense when you look when you just look if you're a general observer, but if you look deep into the details, Vikings have six and a half wins, I believe, is their win total. If you flip Kirk Cousins to Minnesota. I bet that the the win total also flips. I think they're accounting Kirk Cousins to be worth about four wins on the season. Like that, that's a very good quarterback. You know, he if you and if you could get in, like you said, let's say Atlanta's the four, 
you're going to be playing probably like the Cowboys or the Eagles, even if you get the three, you know, maybe you get a, a Lions team or something like that. Tough game still, but that's a winnable home playoff game. And, you know, go to the second round, see what happens. Just get in. So I, I do think in terms of the Falcons competing, this was a, a home run signing. Kirk is a great guy in the locker room. Awesome community guy, like perfect teammate. And I do think that he, he will be able to bounce back close to normal from the injury. I mean, his game doesn't depend on, on mobility at all. As, as we know, <laughs> as we know, it depends nothing on mobility. And Falcons got a great O line. I mean, this, this is a good offense, good team, um, definitely a winner. And, and you like you like the the Mooney signing, right? Mooney and Rondell Moore, like nice. Yeah, numbers. again, you know, I worry a little bit about how much you're paying Darnell Mooney, but it is just true. The situation he was in in Chicago was not great. You know, he was next to DJ Moore, which certainly should have helped him a little bit, but the quarterbacking wasn't great. I. I remember scouting him coming out of college. I thought this guy really had something. And he I remember you were really high. Really? Yeah, it's and again, like he hasn't been perfect. But for what you're paying him, what he needs to be is a decent third option next to Pitts in London. And I'm excited to see what he's able to do with a quarterback who can deliver the ball deep, which is those are the kinds of things he's good for. And some other guys who can draw some attention. 